Hey everyone, Radical Dreamer Steve here with another gaming video. Today we're talking about Ease Memories of Salceta. This is essentially a remake of two different versions of Ease 4, one being Ease 4 Mask of the Sun on the Super Nintendo and Ease 4 The Dawn of Ease on the PC Engine. From what I understand, Ease Memories of Salceta takes these two games, combines elements of both, and essentially makes this definitive version of Ease 4. It was originally released on the PS Vita, but it later came to Windows and PS4. I played the PS4 version, but I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between any of the versions. And yeah, if you like action RPGs, or especially if you like Ease games, I highly recommend Memories of Salceta. Now, I want to start off by talking about why this game divides fans. A lot of people seem to find Memories of Salceta one of the lesser Ease games, and I'm a little bit afraid that's going to make a lot of people hesitant to play it before some of the other games, whereas I really think this should be one of the first entries a player plays. So here's why I think this game is a little bit divisive. A lot of people are playing it after Ease 8. Ease 8 is probably the best Ease game. If not, it's definitely a contender for it. Uh, it's more polished, it's more modern, and I think if you're playing Ease 8 and then going back to Ease 4 Memories of Salceta, people aren't being fair to it. I think it's a better idea to start with Memories of Salceta first and see how the series evolved by playing Ease 8 after. Uh, Memories of Salceta is easier than most Ease games. Yes, you can heal during boss fights, and most of the boss fights are not really all that hard. Ease games are traditionally known for having really challenging boss fights that require an immense amount of strategy. Uh, Memory, Memories of Salceta is admittedly a little bit hit or miss here. There are some really cool boss fights that require strategy, but there's definitely a bunch of boss fights where you just smash the bad guy until he's dead. However, I will say to this, there is a hard difficulty, and that should make it a little more challenging for Ease fans looking for a bigger challenge. And as someone who just beat the game on normal difficulty, if you're really good at action RPGs or Ease games, I don't think that hard mode is going to be hard too hard for you so definitely be willing to give it a go and the last reason i think people kind of malign this game is because the graphics are not really updated it looks like a 10 year old vita game yes it does um, but only newcomers to ease would really care about this if you're an ease fan ease has never been about cutting edge graphics and it's always been about gameplay so so i don't know why this would be a big deal to anyone outside of someone who wants to play a really newfangled modern game. If anything else, it hit me with a lot of nostalgia. It reminded me of like the Dreamcast and PS2 aesthetic. And for some reason, I kept thinking about Grandia 2. And I love Grandia 2, so that's a good thing to think about when I'm playing a game. Those are sort of the reasons why I think people don't necessarily rate Ease 4 all that well. And to be fair, I mean, it's not my favorite Ease game, but I'm not sure it really deserves to be kind of at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, luckily, most of these games are pretty quality, so even if you're a lesser Ease game, you're still a good Ease game, at least in my eyes. All right. The biggest reason I think you should play Ease 4 is because the combat is absolutely excellent. Nihon Falcom really knows how to balance simplicity and speed with their combat. Uh, the combat in Ease Memories of Salceta will initially feel like most other action RPGs. There's an attack button, an evade button, a block button, and then you can allocate skills to your directional buttons to be used with the attack. Combat's pretty simple to get the hang of, but however, there are multiple characters in your party. You can have three party members at one time. They all have different play styles, and certain characters' attacks are strong or weak against certain kinds of enemies. So, basically if you want to get good at the combat and ease, you need to learn how to use your skills with your directional button, how to use those in tandem, and basically learn that with each of the characters you're using. I kept Karna and Adol in the party at all times because those are my two favorite characters. It felt really weird to take Adol out of the party. I did it a few times, but I don't know. It felt strange. And Karna, outside of being just absolutely adorable, is someone I really liked in battle. She was pretty much the only ranged character, so I kept her in pretty much all the time. So you really need to learn how to use each character, how to switch between them, and I know this sounds complicated, but it's not really that hard. You'll know how much damage you're doing to an enemy based on the color. So if the color, if you hit an enemy, I think it's yellow, that means you're hitting it for extra damage. You're using the enemy's weakness. However, if the damage is white, it's neutral. And if it's a different color, it might have been like pink or purple. That means your character is not strong against the enemy and you should switch your character. 
And then furthermore, there's also a super attack. There's another MP gauge that builds up the more you damage enemies, and it unleashes this kind of cool animated attack that just does a ton of damage. Um, I usually saved it for boss fights. However, it charges up fast enough where you can definitely use it against regular enemies. I just didn't really feel like you needed to. In essence, this combat system is fast, responsive, and it gives you just enough complexity to remain interesting. It's not going to make you want to rip your hair out. There's nothing that's really that hard to understand, but it's definitely more interesting than a combat system that just has you pressing A the whole game to attack. I'm looking at you, Final Fantasy XV. The second reason you really got to play this game is because the soundtrack is amazing. Yes, all the Ease Games soundtracks are amazing. Memories of Salsetta is no exception. It probably doesn't have my favorite Ease soundtrack, but most of the tunes in Salsetta are really good. There's a nice blend of more symphonic tracks and more sizzling rock guitar tracks, and the developers did a really good job of making the music match the environment and the scene that's going on. I didn't feel like there was any music that was out of place, like in some games. There was emotional music playing when there should have been emotional music playing, and the music playing in the forest when you're exploring just really wanted me to go out there and kick butt, explore, and find more stuff. So kudos to the soundtrack. It's one of the shining aspects of pretty much all the Ease games. Next is the story, and a lot of people like to critique this story. This story isn't that bad. It's actually decent. Um, it isn't one of the best JRPG stories of all time. You're not going to get like a Suikoden, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy IX level story here. It's just not that deep. But I think what's here is, is far more than passable. I really appreciated that each of the characters in the game had a problem to resolve, and I think their separate quests and reasons to be in the party were interesting enough. For instance, Karna, who was my favorite character, her quest was to save her brother from being mind-controlled. Her brother was this really good musician and artist, and by all means he excelled at everything, however he was kidnapped from the village and basically used to fight his own people. Now. These characters aren't like super fleshed out and interesting, but I think we learn just enough about them to care about their backstories and what happens to them. I also think that there's a ton of Ease lore and history here. For instance, we find out about the Darklings and the Kingdom of Salsetta and some other stuff that relates to other Ease games. Someone who wants a more complete picture of the Ease universe really needs to play Salsetta. However, don't let that scare you. If you have never played an Ease game, this can absolutely be played as a standalone game. There's really nothing referenced about Ease Book 1 and 2, which are the games that are technically prequels to this one. So if this is your first Ease game, actually, that's a pretty fitting place to start. And if it's not your first Ease game, well, cool, you're going to get more lore here, even if the main story is pretty much average to decent. I would be remiss not to talk about the pace of this game, and this is generally for Ease games in general. Uh, Ease Memories of Salsetta is not a long game. It's only about 20 to 30 hours, probably more realistically 20 to 25 hours, and it couldn't really be stretched much more than that because you'd just be needlessly grinding, and though there are side quests, there's not so many that it's going to take you a ton of time to finish them. Uh, that could be a turnoff for some people. However, as someone in their 30s with a busy life and other things to do, that's actually an appeal. I felt like it was it was a good length for the game. If it was if, if this was a 40, 50 hour game with the same engine, I think it would have started to overstay its welcome. Ease Memories of Salsetta never really stays in one place for too long. You have map exploration, towns, dungeons, and everything feels well balanced. There are longer dungeons, but nothing near the magnitude of the final dungeons of the first two Ease games, which were absolute labyrinths for anyone that played them or didn't play them. So for me, it's a real feat how accessible this game is. This is a great Ease game to start with. It's not overwhelming. It's not too long. It's a ton of fun. And yeah, it's a bit easier than the other Ease games, making it a great entry point to see if you like the series or not. The last thing I want to talk about is how this game sort of gave me a false feeling of exploration, like I could just explore this forest any way I wanted to. The beginning of the game just dumps you in the uh, forest of Salsetta. I almost forgot the name. And uh, it really feels like you can go anywhere you want. You can't. There's natural barriers that obstruct your path and need to be cleared with items or abilities you get later in the game. But I really thought it was cool how this game kind of kept you playing a more linear narrative. Like, it is a very narrative-driven game. However, there's, like, side quests, there's stuff to explore, there's 
like little side areas with treasure chests. Some of them have pretty decent stuff to find, by the way. And also some tougher enemies if you want to level up a little faster. And I just felt like it was really cool how there's just enough exploration there to make it feel like it was this vast forest that could be explored any way I wanted it to, while the game really stuck to a pretty strong narrative approach. My final thoughts on this game are that if you like action RPGs or ease games, definitely play this. It's better than the lion's share of action RPGs on the market. It isn't my favorite ease game, but I still think it's a great entry in the series. The things that make the ease series great, like the really frantic combat, the pace of the game, the music, Adol's adventures, that's all here. It's all here. Okay, that's it for this episode. Let me know what your thoughts on E's Memory of Salsetta are. Am I crazy for saying this is a really good action RPG that most people should play? Or did you love it as much as I did? Take care, game on, and I'll see you in the next episode.